Good evening, everyone. This is Donald again. Welcome to the second edition of Fond Memories. Before I begin, I wanted to thank all my friends and others who watched the video and gave me some feedback and positive commentary. Uh, definitely was not expecting it. I was doing it for kind of a side thing and for fun, but and I was going to keep going anyway. But now that I know that I have a audience of people who actually are wanting to maybe see what I have to say. I'm going to, you know, obviously do my best and I will keep please giving me feedback either on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever it may be. I love to hear from you whether I brought up good memories or you have any room uh, suggestions for room for improvement. Uh, just to note a couple of things I will do to improve. Uh, I actually, as I speak, I'm staring at my camera and I actually bought an external mic. Uh, hopefully the audio will be, I don't think the audio was bad in the in the first edition, but I'm just testing this out. So that's something I'm gonna work on. Try to work on something for lighting, but the, the lighting I had didn't quite work out. So I'm just gonna go with what I have for now and I'll try to figure out how I might improve it uh, in the future. Now, enough with the introductions and thank yous. Let's go on to the topic of today, which would be I'm going to talk about my experiences and memories of Ceremony, or better known as Ceremony Center in Daly City, California. So why Daly, why Ceremony, why Ceremony Center? You know, as a kid, uh, my parents, we lived, uh, we lived close to the border of San Francisco and Daly City, close to the Daly City BART station. Um, while we did go to our shares of places like Chinatown, for example, Charmani was one of the other places we went to a lot. So a lot of time spent shopping around, walking around, whether with mom and dad or sometimes just mom only on the weekends. So obviously, and then uh, as we as I grew up and got older, I spent a lot of time at Charmani on my own and also uh, along with my mom uh, in her later years before she passed away, uh, we spent a lot of time just, I took her a lot of times walking around, you know, the Charmani as it is as it exists today. So with that, with that, it's great to look back at how Ceremony, what's it, how Ceremony is today, but also talk about how Ceremony was back in the day. So before I jump into this main specifics about you know what my recollections and memories of the old Ceremony was versus the new, a couple of fast facts about Ceremony Center as a whole. One, Ceremony was opened in 1969, obviously in Daly City, California. Uh, the mall itself is about 1,139,906 square feet and currently has 104 stores and services with three anchor tenants. And we'll, we're all going to talk about my memories of those tenants, obviously, later. Uh, my plan for today is to uh, talk about the anchor stores, past and present. Then I'll transition into the food court area uh, to talk about what was there. And then later uh, after that, I will talk about the outside area, what's there now and what I recollect was there prior. And then lastly, I'll finish with a discussion of other stores that were not part of the anchor tenants uh, that I have some good memories from. So thanks again for watching. So why don't we get started with the first topic, which would be our first anchor tenant, Montgomery Wards. So as I mentioned, let's talk about Montgomery Wards. Montgomery Wards was one of the chain stores that I went to a lot at Ceremony Center. Uh, some quick facts about Montgomery Ward was they were founded in 1872 and ultimately shut down around 2000 due to you know their business struggling uh, against uh, lower price competitors like a Target and Walmart. Uh, but in its peak, Montgomery Ward was a leading department store chain with hundreds of stores around the world. It's funny, in today's Retail. I can't really think of a fair comparison to how what Montgomery Wards was. I remember they used to sell clothes and used to sell a lot of things, but not groceries. So I'm even though it was mentioned in the Wikipedia page I was looking at that Montgomery Wards suffered at the hands of uh, stores like a Walmart and Target. I for whatever reason my recollection of Montgomery Ward doesn't strike me as being like a Target store since Target to me sold a lot of you know they have food items and clothes. I don't remember, I remember Montgomery Ward more as a clothing shop than maybe other stuff, maybe electronics too, more than like having groceries and whatnot. But that's just personal recollection, right? Um, 
If anyone else has any fair comparison about what Montgomery Ward would be to a story that's comparable today, I would love to hear from you. Feel free to comment on my, on the YouTube comments. Uh, but besides those recollections of just being the store itself in terms of what the store sold and other things, I really surprisingly don't have a lot of recollection of other things at Montgomery Ward. I'm pretty sure I bought stuff there with mom, dad, and throughout the years and times. Uh, but don't have anything that really stands out. Uh, and I don't think I have anything in the house that would remind me of Montgomery Ward, unfortunately. Um, so obviously, uh, in terms of today, uh, when after Montgomery Ward closed at Ceremonti, what took over was a Target. You know, so you see, I took a picture of the uh, Target logo as it exists today, uh, and you know, Target's doing well, and hopefully, it'll be there for a while. But you know, uh, as far as Montgomery Ward, it was. Uh, Good store that lasted, but maybe didn't adapt to the times, and that's why they ended up closing. So, which was unfortunate, but you know, they, they did well. Um, I will say though, even though Montgomery Ward, the physical store closed, the former corporation closed, someone purchased the assets of Montgomery Ward, and Montgomery Ward's the brand these days is around as a online retailer. You can go look them up online and uh, see what they're selling. Okay. Now that we've finished with Montgomery Ward, let's go on to our next old chain store, that, or old uh, tenant chain uh, tenant uh, anchor store, which is uh, Mervyn's. All right, let's go ahead and talk about Mervyn's, the second anchor store at the Ceremony Center when I was a kid. Um, Mervyn's as a whole, the corporation was founded actually in the San Lorenzo, California, or East Bay area. Uh, back around 1949, and ultimately as a corporation, due to the struggles of business, went to bankruptcy and closed in 2009. Um, according to Wikipedia, Mervyn's was considered kind of a middle-tier, middle-scale department store that sold you know, national brands of clothing, footwear, electronics, and other items. And that description fits what I remember of it. Uh, if I were to do a comparative, a comparison of what Mervyn, a store like in today's world that would be comparable to what Mervyn's was, I would say maybe a Kohl's. I don't shop at Kohl's too often these days, but when I've been there a few times, you know, I say, yeah, it reminds me of a Mervyn's. It has, you know, some name brands, net brands that you know, but maybe not the most famous brands or the most expensive brands, but, you know, still relatively solid brands. Um, with that being said, like, I actually have more memories of uh, Mervyn's than I did of Montgomery Wards. So one of the things I remember uh, back uh, when I was younger, I think I was in middle school, uh, was I got my first pair, I want to say my first pair of Reebok shoes at Mervyn's with my mom. I think uh, I was going to my Catholic middle school for, for between 6th and 8th grade. I can't remember what year it was It was uh, that I purchased the shoes. But um, Reeboks were actually hot. Unlike today, Reebok kind of a specialized brand kind of you know for certain types of things. But back then, Reebok was kind of the hot thing. Everybody seemed to have it. And I purchased a pair of uh Reeboks, or my mom did, actually, for me. So, you know, that was kind of cool. Um, and then through the years, you know, before Mervyn's closed, spent a lot of time there looking through things and looking to buy things at Mervyn's. You know, they had decent stuff. And it was unfortunate when they closed. Kind of sad, you know, sad way anytime, even when Montgomery were closed. You know, some place you've been to since you were younger. Um, after Mervyn's closed, the spot was empty for a while, and then a uh, J.C. Penney moved in. Uh, J.C. Penney probably equivalent to a Mervyn's too, you know, like a middle tier kind of brand uh, store, right? And spent a lot of time at that J.C. Penney spot as well, uh, looking at things and buying things, you know, whatever. Uh, especially in the latter years uh, when my mom had dementia, we spent a lot of time walking through the the J.C. the J.C. Penney store when it reopened. Uh, and today, if you look at the photo I have of the spot uh, of the spot now, it's actually empty. Uh, the J.C. Penney closed several years ago. And has been remained empty in terms of having a regular anchor tenant there, but uh, the Halloween store, um, you know, every there's a holiday store, a Halloween store that will pop up, you know, pop up there, you know, for you know from probably late September through through Halloween until a few days after, and then it closes. And I think they might have a Christmas store there here and there. Um, don't know what they're gonna do with that empty anchor tenant spot. Um, there was something online that I saw that it might become a movie theater, but I read elsewhere that a movie theater at Ceremony might be going somewhere else. Um, but, you know, with COVID, 
the economy kind of in a bit of a struggle at the mo moment, maybe some of these plans are put on hold because that spot, at, like I said, for JCPenney has been empty for quite a few years now uh, since that particular, since JCPenney closed. All right, now that we're done talking about Mervyn's and the JCPenney and the empty spot, let's look at one of the, the long time tennis that's still there, Macy's. All right, as I mentioned in the previous segment, let's talk about Macy's. Now, I've been giving some of the background of like Mervyn's and Wards, uh, Montgomery Wards, because you know, those companies are effectively are defunct or not around. I, I, I know w Montgomery Wards is revived as an online brand, but I mentioned some of the past history. Now, Macy's still around, so I probably won't give you as much history, um, but give you some quick facts. One, Macy's was founded in 1858. Uh, uh, currently has 510 stores according to Wikipedia as of uh, 2022. Um, you know, if people have been watching news, department stores in, in general and other box, big box stores have been struggling due to, you know, the, the, the growth of online shopping. Uh, so there was rumblings that Macy's might close down, but fortunately it's still uh, remained open uh, the, as a corporation and also the stores in um, Daily City is still there. Uh, the downtown San Francisco score is still there. Uh, the big one that did close was the one in the San Francisco Stonestown Mall, which has been, that particular store has been redeveloped into other stores, which maybe I'll talk about Stonestown uh, in a future edition of, uh, of uh, Fond Memories. Um, but, talking, speaking of memories in regards to this Macy's in Daly City at the Ceremony Center, believe it or not, I actually don't have a lot. I think when I was younger, Macy's wasn't really the spot I wanted to go to. You know, when you're young, you're not really interested in like upscale clothes and other type stuff. Um, so didn't really go there a lot. I think my dad didn't really care. My mom probably didn't care that much for it either. Uh, however, I will share a memory of my experiences with Macy's in downtown San Francisco. And the only reason why I share it is because it's not likely anybody will be able to replicate that experience in the future. Um, so, when I was younger, you know, we'd go to Macy's downtown San Francisco because, you know, we'd go to Chinatown and maybe we'd walk around to downtown a little bit. And I remember specifically um, one day or evening, my dad took me to the Macy's in San Francisco and we were walking around and I was messing with a computer. Uh, it, the computer was the Apple IIe, you know, right? Everyone these days knows Apple, right? iPhone, iPad whatever, uh, maybe uh, the, the MacBook Pros and whatever, right? all the laptops, right? Well, Apple II was, yes, an Apple computer, a desktop computer that preceded the, the Mac computers. Um, and we actually, I was playing with different programs like the uh, one of the introductory programs was the Apple Presents Apple IIe. And I was messing, it was fun actually, kind of cool to introduce yourself to computer. And then somehow I think we, I don't remember it that night or whatever, but I ended up, or my dad ended up getting the computer. Um, and that Apple, and that was probably around 1980, gosh, three, 84, can't remember the year. And that Apple IIe was around, you know, my parents' house and I was using it probably up until early 2000s, um, whatever it may be. I even got it connected to the internet uh, by, uh, you know, for those old timers, the dial up internet. DSL and those uh, broadband, what was that? That didn't exist back then or not in great form. Uh, so that was one great memory, you know, of getting a computer, you know, that, you know, these days Macy's electronics, nah, you're not gonna get much electronics from uh, uh, from uh, from uh, from Macy's. Uh, the other interesting thing that I got from Macy's in downtown San Francisco uh, was video games, the Atari 5200. So. For those who are not Atari fans, you know, Atari had the Atari VCS as it was known back in the days when it was originally introduced, I think in the late 70s. Uh, later it was rebranded re or maybe people would know it as the Atari 2600. Uh, but the 5200 was the next generation system after the VCS slash 2600. Um, and it didn't do as well from a business standpoint. Uh, because I think Atari was rushed it and they were trying to, from a business standpoint, compete against some of the other more modern systems that were out there. But despite that, we did get the system, my dad did get the system and I remember the first day or second day that we had it, my dad, me, maybe and my mom too, were playing the game that came with it, was uh, which was Super Breakout. 
Um, we they, we spent hours playing on that thing, and you know that tells you, in excuse me, in retrospect, that that was the one of the original iterations of the system because Super Breakout was not the best game that you will want to include on a game on a game system. However, that was really the first version of the system. Later systems would include a more famous game known as Pac-Man. Yeah, everyone knows Pac-Man, but at the time when we when the system was first introduced, we were using Super playing Super Breakout. Uh, the Atari 5200, I had it for a long time as well. Played it until I don't remember how when I stopped playing it. The joysticks were pretty bad, uh, but you know it was a fun time uh, with the Atari and the Apple. Uh, in fact, even though I don't have either system anymore here in 2023, I actually uh, have one an emulator for the. Apple II system on my uh, iMac desktop computer, and then I have some emulations of the Atari 5200 on another system that I can play some old games. So even though I don't have the originals, I still can relive some of my younger days uh, playing with uh, some emulated type things uh, in 2023. So that's pretty much what I remember from Macy's. Uh, now, of course, not in ceremony, but still memory nonetheless. The next thing I'm going to go over is the uh, food court area. Uh, there are some memories there I would like to share. Alright, as I mentioned in the previous segment, let's talk about the Ceremony Center food court area. Now, I'm going to talk about what exists there now, so I can put some context what was there before. Um, as it exists today, yes, there's the food court area. Uh, if you look at the photo I took uh, with a bunch of restaurants and whatnot, um, and you notice in the picture there's also a Dick's Sporting Goods. Now, I don't know if Ceremonti Center considers Dick's a anchor tenant. It wasn't noted in the Wikipedia page. It may be. Maybe not. It doesn't really matter. I discounted the other three stores uh, uh, that existed either prior or now as, ten as anchor tenants. Uh, but just to talk about the area now, like the Dick's obviously wasn't there, always there. It's only been there maybe 10 years. I can't remember exactly how long it was. Uh, my recollection of that particular area where the Dick's portion is, it used to be, I think, at least two stores. One On one side, uh, it was a hallway, and on one side of it was a Long's Drugs, if I remember, like kind of a grocery store. And then on the other side, I think, was a New York, New York, kind of like a women's clothing fashion type store. Um, and then when Ceremonti went through a bit of a remodel at some point, again, can't remember all the years and what happened, uh, they redid it, that whole area, and put in the Dick's Sporting Goods store. Um, then the food court area, gosh, to be fair, as much as I go to the Ceremonti Center food court in more today's modern days, I can't remember how the food court was back in the old days. Uh, here's why, though. There's some context, right? Uh, Back in the day at Cermonti Center, there were food places kind of spread around different parts of the mall. In the mall, you had at some point a McDonald's, uh, which was closer to the, uh, right in front of where Montgomery Wards was, or Target if you want to think about today's terms. There was also a Burger King that was in there. Um, so, you know, speaking, and those were probably two of the more popular places that end up going with. There's another place that I will talk about later that I also went to a lot as well. So going to those places, I never really focus on the food court until like later on, you know, right? Uh, and the food court as it exists today, I think it existed back then. But if you ask me what was there before, gosh, can't tell you. <laughs> I mean, it's, it sucks. And uh, Facebook used to have a group. Uh, about Ceremony Mall and a bunch of old places. But I think that group went away, so I can't really go back and reference anything. So unfortunately, don't have a lot of context of what was there before uh, in terms of the food court. But hey, it's okay. Uh, I still remember a lot of the other places that I went to that were in the mall that were for food. So I'll talk about some of those stuff uh, in, uh, in the next few por uh, portions of the video here. Okay, now that we kind of got done talking about the food court area and Dick's and what was there before, let's take a walk outside and look at what's there now and what was there before. All right, as I mentioned, we're gonna go take a look at outside the Ceremony Center. And if you look at the picture I have 
on screen, you notice, you know, it might be a little bit hard in the distance, but you see uh, Nordstrom Rack, TJ Maxx, and a few other stores there. For those who uh, have been around for a while, they'll know that this those set of stores there are rather recent development within the uh, gosh three to last three to five years I want to say don't remember exactly uh, they weren't always there uh, it was empty for a while uh, but even prior long time ago we're talking when I was younger there were two stores there that I remember two stores that were there, uh, two places uh, one store one restaurant that were there uh, let's talk about the store first the store itself uh, for those old timers may remember uh, the place was called Good Guys. What's Good Guys? Well, uh, there's not a lot of history on them on uh, on the internet, but from what I saw, Good Guys was, you know, and I remember they were an electronic store, chain of electronic stores. They only had about 73 or so stores around uh, a few different states. I think California and Oregon uh, opened around 1973 and closed as a chain around 2005. Uh, you know. Uh, obviously, it closed. You know, competition, everything. The having specialized stores selling just electronics uh, became bad business during those times due to the growth of like the Targets and other stores like Walmart. Um, so now I remember Good Guys a lot. I went to the stores, even though I didn't buy a lot of stuff. I remember Good Guys sold, you know, probably stereo equipment, uh, maybe car stereos too, as well, TVs, etc. Now, one thing I do remember from Good Guys. And you'll be uh, interested to know is I have I had a spot a Sony handy cam or camcorder um, and why do I remember this because uh, the I believe I bought the camcorder from the ceremony good guys around or my dad bought it around 2004 somewhere around there why did I remember that because my dad and mom went we went on vacation to china in 2004 2005 and 2007 so we went three out of four years and i wanted to document our trip so we ended up getting that camcorder i just showed you i think i used it pretty much those three times now you can't really tell from looking at the camcorder itself but it tells you how old it was the camcorder what does it use for storage no, not flash cards. No, not SD cards, but cassette tapes. Um, so yes, that thing is old. In fact, I still have the tapes around with the, some of my trip video uh, that we took from China. Um, unfortunately, good guys closed, but you know, it wasn't surprising given the how things were transitioning to a more digital world, uh, as we all know now, where you can record stuff with your phone and etc. So that was pretty cool. Then the other place that I remember being outside uh, at the end, it was known as Tunes, but I think prior it might have been known as Farrell's. Uh, but basically, it was an ice cream parlor and restaurant. Now, why did I remember the place? Did something stand out about the food or anything? Well, to be frank, you know, even though it was a restaurant and ice cream parlor, I'm sure the ice cream was probably pretty good. I don't remember anything about the food. Uh, the reason why I remember was a lot of my teams that I coach in basketball for uh, CYO, uh, my St. Mary's team, St. Mary's in Chinatown, uh, we went to Tunes quite a bit. Uh, I remember going with one team after our last game of the season. I remember taking a, a, having a couple of my teams go to celebrate my birthday and maybe even went after some of our championships that we won, if I recall correctly. I think I have some photos, which I will... Um, uh, share on the screen here shortly um, and you can kind of see some of it. You don't really see the restaurant, just really meet us taking photo, uh, taking uh, photos at certain parts of the restaurant there. Uh, so that's my recollection. Uh, I don't remember what your the place closed. Uh, I just remember it was a shame because it had a lot of fond memories of those days uh, being uh, tunes to celebrate and whatnot. So, you know, um, so some good times there. All right. We're getting close to the end here. So I've talked about, you know, the anchor stores, um, talked about the food court area, and I talked about outside. What last bit I'm gonna talk about is some of the individual stores that were not anchor stores, not outside. They were in the mall that I have some memories about. And I'm sure some of you will remember them as well. 
All right, for the last part of this video, let me go through some other locations and stores that I have some recollections of and some memories. Starting off with B. Dalton. Now, bookstores these days, or bookstores for a while were struggling. You know, major, larger chains like Borders Closed. Uh, Barnes & Noble still hanging in there though, which is good. Uh, but before the internet and before eBooks became a thing, B. Dalton and other booksellers were fairly large. Uh, B. There's B. Dalton in Ceremony Center, obviously, that's why I'm talking about it. It's also B. Dalton I remember going to a lot down in downtown San Francisco. Um, I can't remember if B. Dalton was around when I was super young at Ceremony Center. I think it was there, but I did, you know, in, in, during my college years, I want to say, at B. Dalton, I actually uh, spent a lot of time to reading different books, and I think I had a friend that worked there, so she was able to get me discounts on books that maybe didn't already have a discount, so that was actually pretty cool. Uh, during the college years, things I liked to read was like some of the Star Wars novels, like the Star Wars were revival novels, like Heir to the Empire, you know, like basically what would have happened if uh, re after Return of Jedi, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Luke Skywalker continued on, you know, and this was obviously before we had the more recent movies, so those books were pretty darn good. Uh, so I remember getting the getting the books from B. Dalton during those days. I can't remember the years, maybe college 95, 96 ish years, and went there quite a bit until, you know, the B. Dalton store closed, which was unfortunate. Um, but I still go to different bookstores like, you know, Barnes and Noble, like uh, at a different mall uh, when I get a chance. Another store, which is also a bookstore, uh, was Walden Books, uh, which I believe also was in Ceremony Center. They had obviously like many other stores, different places around the Bay Area. Uh, Walden's, I think, was there and I spent time, I think when I was younger, reading a lot of kid stuff. You know, like if you remember Encyclopedia Brown, those kind of books. I think I liked reading the kid stuff when I was younger. And as I got older, obviously you grew out of it. I think by the time I got older, Walden's had kind of closed, if I recall. Uh, but when I was younger, went to Walden's quite a bit, even when I was ceremony and other locations. Uh, it's unfortunate there's really no bookstores anymore at ceremony but you know it, it is it is what it is these days with the growth of ebooks i do read ebooks still uh i read ebooks i mean primarily these days for just my uh entertainment stuff uh for like technical studies and other type things uh, i will buy the actual book because i sometimes feels better from my from a learning perspective so good times with uh, books back in the day um previously i mentioned uh food court I'll talk about it again, uh, which was the McDonald's that was in front of the Montgomery Ward, um, or now Target. Uh, that place was insanely popular. It was always busy. But then when it closed down, I can't remember how long ago, I was shocked that it closed because that place was always busy. Um, and I mentioned, you know, there was a Burger King. Well, that Burger King closed too. So I'm thoroughly shocked that at a major mall that there's really no traditional fast food place that's inside the mall. Uh, now there, now a new, recent new burger place, Super Duper, uh, opened uh, at the uh, outside uh, the mall, but you know that wasn't there when we were younger. McDonald's was the place to be for me. You know, I always loved my McNuggets, Quarter Pounders, maybe the occasional you know Happy Meal toy if it was cool. So kind of surprising it closed. To this day, don't really know why. I don't know if it was the ceremony decided not to renew the, the lease or McDonald's decided to exit. Whatever the case may be, um, it closed. And that spot, actually, I thought that spot was actually filled because there's a Dave & Buster's that opened in more recent years. But actually, that spot was just empty. And in fact, I went to the mall you know, uh, recently and I noticed, well, hey, a Cinnabon is now there. Uh, a Cinnabon slash Auntie Ons is kind of a combined store. It's kind of ironic that the that the Cinnabon um, opened because there was a Cinnabon there, you know, a while ago and it shut down and they decided to reopen. So, okay, whatever. I mean, Cinnabon's good if you if you like the, the cinnamon rolls and, you know, having a lot of sugar. So, uh, so it's good to see the place, you know, back being used. But, you know, thinking back in the history, it's just surprising, like I said, that the McDonald's closed because it was pretty darn popular with everybody. Uh, the next thing, around that area, uh, across the way from the McDonald's uh, in kind of the same area of the mall, um, by the doorway, 
to when you exit the mall, um, there used to be an arcade there, video game arcade. Um, can't remember if it was there was a name to it, but you know I remember going in there when I'm at the mall, go play some games for a little while while mom and dad are walking around, whatever, right? It was just cool, throw in some quarters and play games. And then later on, you know, I think arcades, prob I want to say closed in the 90s, can't remember, you know, right? With the growth of like, you know, the uh, Nintendo, later Xbox and the higher powered gaming systems and PCs, I think home video, I think arcade games lost a lot of popularity, right? So that mall closed. But funny, I almost wish that mall was the arcade was there again because you know a retro games have become a hot thing i'm a video gamer of a sort i like old games i play a lot of retro games at home on computer systems whatever and there's some retro arcades in the bay area that are popular but um you know i would i wish an arcade was there where i can play some of the old games you know i have to go other places or play at home but you know it's kind of funny arcades are kind of getting revived back because guess what with the malls in general struggling uh, to attract people to come shop because of online shopping. Malls are switching to different ways of attracting folks to come in, right? Whether it be opening a lot of restaurants, uh, other types of entertainment, right? In fact, think of Dave & Buster's I mentioned. Dave & Buster's open, right? And Dave & Buster's is, guess what? Food, drink, and play. A lot of video games there, a lot of stuff for kids, and they have TVs for the adults and adult beverages, right? So um, I guess Dave and Buster's is kind of like, hey, the new edition of the old arcade that was there. Even though I'm not a big fan of the Dave and Buster games, it's not quite the same as it was back in the old days. Uh, I guess it's good that Dave and Buster's is there, uh, a reminder of how the old days were. Uh, but yeah, there used to be an arcade there. Um, that spot where the arcade was, I think later on became a Payless shoe source. And of course, as many people know, I don't know how many people shopped at Payless shoe source. I was not one of them, but Payless shoe source ultimately did close. And uh, I can't remember what store was there uh, when I went by. Uh, but yeah, it, it's filled now, but Payless did shut down a few years ago. Uh, but yeah, that's the history of that spot there in uh, at Ceremony Center. The next spot, and I mentioned this earlier that I would talk about it. It was the third food spot after McDonald's and Burger King that I wanted to talk about. And that place is called Stone Soup. For the people who know me well, my friends and other people I hang out with, they might know I'm a big soup fan or aficionado. Uh, love soup, any kind of soup. It could be split pea, white uh, white bean, uh, white navy bean soup, uh, clam chowder, you name it. I've probably t t tasted it. I go to any restaurant, I'll get some soup. Uh, it could be even noodle soup too, if you want to count that, like ramen and pho and whatever. But you know, I'm thinking American soups and whatnot. Now, I don't know where that came from in terms of why I liked it, but I can tell you what. I know Stone Soup was one of the early places I had a lot of soup when I went to grab lunch. Um, the, there was a Stone Soup at Ceremony, um, and there was also a Stone Soup at Tanfran Mall in San Bruno. Uh, but I remember going to the Sermani quite often with my mom and we would have soup there. I can't remember what else we would have, uh, but I remember it was pretty cool. And I loved getting soup. I think, I can't remember the name of the soup that we used to have. I'm, it's, I visualize it, but can't remember the name. That's fine. Uh, if I remember, maybe I'll make a note or addendum and update the video. But anyway, the, here's the funny thing about Stone Soup. Now, it closed after a while. The one at Sermani closed. The one at Tamfran actually stayed open for a while and and then later closed as well. But it's interesting, in the days, in today's modern world of internet where there's a crap load of information available on almost anything you wanna look up, when I look up Stone Soup, I can barely find, actually, forget barely, I don't think I can find any information on Stone Soup. Maybe it was a local store that really there's no history on. I don't think I found any pictures of the restaurant or soups or anything that was there. I'm surprised no one shared anything. I might have to ask people online and see if anyone remembers that. So that is a little disappointing because I would love to know what the history of the, the store was and who owned it and whatever and what happened to them. But obviously can't find anything. It's all good. But I can say maybe it was because of soup. That's why I love soup as an adult. So last store. Most people should know this one. But I'll bring it up anyway. Last store is Radio Shack. Uh, the Radio Shack was located in front of what formerly was the Mervyn's Wing or JCPenney for more modern times. 
Uh, these days, the, that particular spot where the Mervins is, uh, you, or sorry, where the Radio Shack is, uh, is now like a, a massage place for people. Kind of a bad area because not many people walk that side because that spot's, uh, uh, that particular spot where Mervins and JCPN is still empty. Though there is an Old Navy on that side now. Uh, the Old Navy may draw some people in. Now, for Radio Shack, people can remember many different things from Radio Shack, all their ads, the whatever. Um, I did spend a lot of time at the Mervin, at the Radio Shack uh, at Ceremony. Um, and some of this stuff may be intermixed with other Radio Shacks around that I went to, but let me just re recollect some of the things from Radio Shack. Uh, number one, uh, Radio Shack back in the day gave away a crap load of flashlights. My mom loved flashlights, probably because sometimes we would... When we were out late, we would go home and it would be dark. My mom would just want to be safe and have light, some flashlights to light up the, the dark areas that we were walking around when we went home. Uh, number two, uh, as a retro gamer, I mentioned I played a lot of retro games. Well, one of the games I played was a handheld game. Um, I, I'll share it on the screen when I, uh, edit, when I edit the video. But there was a handheld kind of Pac-Man-like game that I got. I uh, can't quite remember off the top of my head right now because I wrote about it before somewhere else, but I'll share something, a picture of it. Um, and the other things from Radio Shack back then was Radio Shack, besides the flashlights they, they gave away, they gave away free flashlights, was they gave away a lot of batteries, you know? I think that was their way of attracting people to the store by giving away a lot of uh, free stuff. So I think we got a lot of Radio Shack batteries back in the day as well. Uh, so uh, then obviously as time moved on Radio Shack kind of got left behind and that's why they ultimately the whole chain closed I think somebody might have revived or some stores are still around but not obviously in the Bay Area uh, but yeah Radio Shack had some a lot of interesting stuff that we got uh, back in the day uh, and I spent a lot of time looking at stuff just to get the free stuff I don't remember what else I might have bought from Radio Shack uh, you know maybe I, I besides the game the handout came I think we actually have to I bought but not much else that I can re recollect Anyway, so that concludes the last section of the uh, the stores that besides the main tenant stores and some of the stuff outside, and I think that will wrap it up for this edition of Fond Memories. Again, thank you to those who watched my first edition and gave me great feedback and commentary. I uh, look forward to everyone's commentary and feedback on this edition. Uh, be on the lookout for a future edition. Like I mentioned earlier, I have different ideas I'm playing with about what I want to talk about in the future. Um, but, you know, I have to put it together as well, you know. Um, and maybe I'll talk about how my video process and recording and share that too as well. Just if, if someone wants to do this, hey, you can do it too if you want. I'll share how I'm doing it. All right. Thank you again. Have a great rest of your weekend. Um, and I will see you guys again in the next edition of Fun Memories.